that's uh is that a deal that's a bad idea <laughs> but i okay oh okay uh i think we're live yeah okay oh yeah i remember i have to watch the stream you have to watch the with stream no yeah. Yeah. with no audio with no audio yeah but still, you won't be able to hear the cowbell. Like I, I think I can like put the head headphones to the camera so you can uh, to the microphone so you can hear. It. Uh, but anyways, can you beatbox the cowbell every time you play the cowbell. You also do it with your mouth. I can try to. For me, I can, I can try to. Yes. All right. So hi everybody, uh, everybody who joins. Um, could you let us know uh, if the audio levels are fine? If you can hear Sam and if you can hear me, that would be amazing um otherwise uh, we're just gonna start so um welcome back this is the second live stream actually that i'm doing together with simon because if you joined last time then you'll remember that um we kind of left left uh, the project off at a not so finished point right so we we're trying to like built this cowbell on the breadboard um and we had actually a ton of technical difficulties <laughs> Um, not so we're, all... we're closing up on the halfway to halfway point. <laughs> yeah, about that. So basically, like just as a recap for anybody who wasn't there. So what we did was um, we took a good long look at uh, this here, which is the, um, the, the, the schematics for the cowbell in the 808 service manual. And um, we basically got this stuff here set up because this wasn't so hard. Like these are just like two oscillators that are tuned to like two different pitches uh, and that are then um, combined at some point. And the way that they are combined is via these two things here, which are uh, VCAs actually. Kind of shitty VCAs, we established that, but they are VCAs. And the issue was with these VCAs because we set one of them up, like Simon did one, I did one, and uh, nothing really worked. So uh, I remember like at first, Simon, like you, you just got a kick out of it. You just got like a thump and that was it, right? Yeah, I basically got the pulse that was supposed to trigger it. Yeah, I would assume. Yeah, but that's that's likely to be on me, though. <laughs> yeah, <Just saying. laughs> so we, we then we tried a bunch of different stuff. Like we tried replacing the transistor with something else and, you know, removing diodes and whatever, and nothing really worked. I tried to set it up. And in my case, uh, what happened was that uh, so, you know, it's a VCA. So ideally, if you don't trigger it, it shouldn't uh, produce any noise. But in our case or in my case, basically what happened was like I uh, pushed the button to trigger it and then it would just like make a sound, but the sound would not go away. So it would just like be like one continuous horrible noise. And there were like a bunch of theories in the chat, like what could be going wrong. So we we're talking about. Um, I remember some people even set it up in chat. True. Also did it on their breadboard. And they had the and same, that the same similar problem. Similar results. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, so th there were like a bunch of theories. Like some people said maybe you know the resistor value here is wrong because we're using like a different. Um, using a different uh, supply level voltage, maybe this resistor needs to be increased or decreased, you know, because people were theorizing that uh, the transistor was just constantly open. And that's why, you know, you got the you got the signal out of it. Um, and then I think, again, other people were like suggesting to get rid of the diode. And uh, we tried a bunch of things, but nothing really worked. Um, and last time I promised or we kind of both uh, talked about how we were gonna uh there were a lot of empty promises yes. being thrown thrown out yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah we were talking about how we are going to like go back and you know do things with it and then when we when we do the next stream which is today um we will have something and uh, i i put it off for a long time like that was two weeks ago uh and then today like a couple hours before the stream i was like you know what let's sit down and do it and um what i did was uh so first of all, I, I, I went back and I set up these two oscillators uh, with the proper pitch. So, you know, I took my time, I set them up, I added the trimmer, I took out my oscilloscope, I made sure that we get like exactly these um, frequencies for the oscillation. And um, that was actually quite time consuming, you know, to like fine tune them. And then also I kind of noticed yeah. that like over time the frequency drifted. I'm assuming it's like has to do with temperature or something, but... 
uh, yeah, so spent an, um, an embarrassingly long time on that, but got it to work. Uh, I can quickly show you. So if we switch to the breadboard. I was just studying for my finals to distract myself from <laughs> this live stream. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um all right let me this is kind of a mess let me kind of uh um, do you want me to go i'm gonna go grab my breadboards yeah, also grab your, i forgot grab, grab your bad breadboard yeah uh so i hope this is not gonna be super fucking loud okay so uh what i'm gonna do is like this is this is running right now but you can't hear it because I'm not triggering it. Um, so let me pick up the uh, here. This would be the high pitched oscillation. This would be like the 800 Hertz one. And let's see if I can bridge this over here into this buffer. I would, I would argue that I got a bit distracted. <laughs> yes, can you, Simon, can you hear this? Wait, let me try it again. Hmm. Yeah, the problem is like just for the people in the chat. So uh, I again had like difficulties with the audio setup. And right now Simon can hear me. Oh yeah, you can only hear me through the through the laptop microphone. So it doesn't help if I put this microphone next to my uh, thing. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just so you know, Simon, can if you I- put, put your microphone next to the breadboard? <laughs> well, see, no, no, I, I would, I, I would, <laughs> wait, people are saying that it's loud also. Oh, it's very, okay. I'm, let me turn it down. So that's 800 Hertz. <laughs> and the then cowbell would always be better if it's less loud. Yes. My humble opinion. Yes. So that's, uh, that was the high kind of level oscillation, uh, the, the, the high frequency. And then let me try the low level one. Oh my God, this is difficult. I think it might still be too loud according to chat. Yeah. Well, they're gonna have to endure it for another second. Like this is the lower one. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, so, you know, that's what I did. So I set up the two oscillators, I tuned them. Uh, oh, and uh, actually someone joined us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. What's going on? Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Simon, can you can hear, hear you. her? I hear. Can, can you hear me? You hear her. Yes. I don't hear her. Yeah. That's a I do. That's weird. Okay. Oh, now I can hear you. Let's talk shit about Moritz. Ah, bummer. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, can you hear me? This is yes. this is Eva. She, she was just joining for this stream because uh, we want to do a future stream. And we want to look at the, the Moog letter filter together. And uh, she thought it might be like good for her if she uh, jumped in on this one and just observed a bit and like watched us do our thing. And maybe you have also some suggestions. Um, mm -hmm. Are you are you caught up on what we're trying to to do here? I don't know actually. Tell me please. All right. So a... cowbell. Cowbell. Okay. So here. So, so... Uh, Zorgate. Zor Combining no, actually not. So, so we're trying to be faithful to the 808. Um, this, okay. is, this is the service manual. And you can see here, this is the cowbell um, section in the service manual. And last time what we did was like, we, um, we set up these oscillators over here, like the CMOS, you know, Schmidt trigger inverter things. Yeah. Um, and then we also set up these two uh, VCAs or one of them. And we got stuck on these because we couldn't get them to work. And uh, I was just now explaining that, like before this live stream, I went back and I, you know, I tried to do some work ahead of time and set this up. And what I just demonstrated was just that I have properly tuned these two oscillators because that's something that we skipped last time. Because it's kind of a pain, you know, you have to put in the trimmer and then you have to make sure that the frequency is right. But yeah, so that 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 part I have. Um, and then afterwards, what I did was I went back to these uh, to this VCA. And mm -hmm. just to explain again, so last time, um, the issue that we faced was that uh, this VCA wouldn't close. So basically we triggered it and it would sound, but then it wouldn't, it wouldn't die down. It would just like keep kind of oscillating basically. 
and mm -hmm. we were really scratching our head because we couldn't understand why like there were like a bunch of theories in the chat and uh, you know some me had some we tried some things but um, ultimately nothing really worked so we, we couldn't fix it and now when I went back uh, you know I set it up again on the breadboard uh, can show this over here um oh also um ever like you am i first up am i pronouncing your name correctly yeah that's fine yeah, yeah okay yeah. very good Eva, yeah. um so you have to this is a bit funky so in order to see like the the breadboard and everything you have to be in the stream are you in the stream i don't know uh how, how do you do that um so you have to go to youtube on youtube yeah right like in a separate thing and you have to like find my stream and go into the stream and mute it because otherwise you're gonna hear yourself on echo basically. Whoa. Okay, yeah. so this is this is happening now on YouTube. Exactly. You're live, okay. basically. Okay. Okay. You're live. Yeah, yeah. you're live. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so let me let, um, let me know when you found the stream. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep explaining like what I've done here. So uh, also for Simon. Um, uh, so this part over here is like what we had last time. These are the two uh, oscillators. This is the 4106. It's, that's a Schmidt trigger inverter chip. Uh, and then here to the left, here's one of these VCAs. Here's one of these VCAs. Uh, those are like identical to the way that we set them up last time. Uh, and then over here, we have the same uh, kind of triggering logic that I also set up last time, which is, uh, it is based on this stuff here. So uh, in the service manual, we have this section up here, which is a, a, a trigger buffer. Um, and then we have uh, this capacitor over here, which uh, uh, charges up and then discharges into the VCA. And then we have this resistor and capacitor over here, um, which are kind of, you know, they are like to pad out the tail of the envelope, if you will. And these things uh, I have also set up on the breadboard. So uh, uh, this part here, but instead of the triggering logic, um, what I am using is just a uh, push button. That's all. So if I push the button, uh, basically current flows into the two capacitors and then those capacitors discharge into the, into the VCAs and that makes them sound. And I'm going to demonstrate that this uh, actually works now. I hope, you, I hope you can hear this. I think I think Simon and Eva can't hear it, but I hope. No. Can the can the chat let me know if 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 you can hear it? But you didn't touch on the buffer yet. Yeah, but you did. Shh, shh. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna do that in a second. I said nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I can see that analog says he can hear the cowbell. Yes, yes, sounds like cobble. Okay, perfect. Yes, and um, so the, the the crazy thing is, um, this uh, works because, like, I just kind of by accident figured out that as long as I was feeding the output of these VCAs into uh, my audio interface directly, uh, I had the problem that it wouldn't shut up basically. And at some point I thought, well, maybe there's like an issue with uh, uh, like an interaction with the, with the interface, right? Maybe the interface has like some capacitance or is doing some things that, you know, keeps the, keeps the VCA going basically. And so just like on a hunch, uh, I just added a, um, a, uh, an op-amp chip and I set up a buffer and I just fed like the two outputs, you know, from the two VCAs into the buffer and yeah, what do you know? It just works. So that just shut it up. So I, magic. I, magic. Yeah, I really think that the problem is that, you know, there was some interaction between the device you use for listening and the VCAs. So if you put a buffer in between there, it's fine. And actually, this kind of makes sense because, you know, if we look at the, if we look at the schematic again, we can see that um, actually after these two VCAs, we, I mean, there's a bunch of shit here, but in the end, like we, we do go into, into an amplifier, into an op amp, right? So I'm thinking that's probably just what it is, right? You just need to like isolate the VCAs from whatever you use to listen to the VCAs and that just makes it work. So, um, yeah, I think that's quite nice. 
I mean, you've heard it. I I haven't heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Wait, I I, th I think I can wait, wait, wait. Let me let me try something. If I switch over, if I switch over the audio source in here, uh, then Ooh. I think on the screen they don't hear me anymore at all. It's just fucking gone. But can Chad describe the sound? Can you hear it now? <laughs> really, oh. really, really, really oh, yeah. low. Yeah, but so do you know this um, article, uh, logic noise articles from Hackaday? Yes. So the they they there's schematic for cowbell mixing knob gates with uh, through ZOR gates and then using simple transistor VCA as well without the op amp at the end. But uh, it's similar circuit is just uh, add, adding ZOR gates. Yes. Actually, we talked about this last time. Um, so what's, oh. what's, what's, what's kind of curious is that, you know, in this series, like in this Hackaday um, series, uh, what he does is like he uses these XOR gates a lot to like get like these metallic kind of tones. And yeah. so when I first looked at the service manual, um, I was wondering, um, I was wondering, oh, my, my audio is still low. It didn't work. Let me, let me quickly try and fix that. So this is a nightmare. Like I feel like the this software that we use to do like the the group thing, uh, kind of like in some way interacts with OBS, and that makes my mic not work. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it's still super low. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Okay, now it's still super low. <laughs> Okay, let me try something. I shouldn't have done that. That was that was a bad idea. Uh, switch over here. Okay. It. You can blame me if you want to. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> okay. Ah, I think now I'm back. Okay, chat. Let me know if I'm back. I think I'm back. I think I fixed nice. it. Uh. Mm -mm. Back. I'm back. Very good. Thank you. Um, great. So where were we? Oh yeah, we were talking about the metallic section of it. So as I said, like logic noise, he used the XOR gates. Uh, and then when I first looked at the 808 service manual, I kind of expected to see XOR gates, but there are no XOR mm -hmm. gates. Like also for the symbols, they don't use XOR gates, nothing there. And so I was wondering, you know, if you just take these square wave oscillators just straight up and mix them, it's not going to sound metallic. So I was thinking about like, okay, how do they do that? How do they do it? And mm -hmm. actually like in a different section of the service manual, they explain that they use these VCAs for it because these VCAs are like really bad, if you will. So they, they, they're really bad at doing their job basically. Like the, it's, it's, it's kind of like a crude approximation of a, of a real VCA. And mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I actually want to try now because um, the, the assumption would be that they make it sound the way it does in the end. And just to, um, just to test it, uh, I was thinking about, um, well, how do we do this? I think uh, the problem is, again, only the chat can hear it, but I wanted to go ahead and try one time with the, through the VCAs like this. So chat, please remember the sound. And now, you, it was a it was a very nice cowbell that you just missed. Um, now I will try to um, just take the signal straight like from the oscillators and feed them into the op amp. So we won't get like the envelope, but uh, we will get just like the combined sound, and then we can compare if it sounds uh, more metallic through the VCAs, basically. Okay. I mean, if you w were to keep it constantly open, so to speak, and then look at an oscilloscope, either going through the VCA or straight up, would be interesting to see. Okay, so this is really hard to say. Like, I, I, I just like fed it in here. Like, the problem is like it's a standing tone, so 
it's already like hard to compare it to the other one, which is percussive, basically. It's also interesting to know how, like, if I, I'm going to listen to the stream now. Huh. Not half bad. But like, I'm curious to whatever YouTube compression does to the audio also. In yeah. As far as one single note goes. That's true. But uh, yeah, so now I, I, I just push the button so I get like a standing tone out of the, out of the VCAs. Honestly, I would say it sounds almost the same. I don't know what the, what the chat thinks. Maybe let's ask the chat. What is the chat that? What does the chat say? Uh, okay, someone says it reminds them of a Casio toy synth. Uh, an analog says it sounds very similar. So yeah, I agree. I, I think. <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Uh, stupidly lazy. Oh, was My it you? Apologies. Was it you, Simon? Oh, well, um, all right. So I think it sounds very similar. Uh, the chat also seems to think it sounds very similar. Um, so there must be something else going on with the symbols. But since we're not, you know, talking about the symbols really today, I think uh, we can maybe keep this as a mystery for for next time. Um, right. So Simon, you were interested in uh, adjusting the envelope, right? Yeah. I just now I'm curious about which Casio has a cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, as I said before, like if we look at the schematic, something interesting that they do is they combine uh, this capacitor over here with uh, this other capacitor over here, which is like behind a resistor. And I also put that like on the breadboard. So if I switch over, that would be uh, this guy here. That's the one microfarad capacitor. And uh, we can quickly compare, like if I take this out and put it back in again, like how it sounds. So this is with the big one. And then, wait, let me turn it up a little bit. Okay, and here's without. So I think you can hear, I mean, Eva and Simon can't, but like this one is much more percussive. It's really just like a quick burst and then it's gone. So is it decay? Is it is it the, the amount of decay? Yeah, so, so basically like right now, um, we are only using this capacitor here. And this capacitor is being fed kind of the trigger voltage directly. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is like, once I let go of the button, it discharges in this direction and then into these two VCAs. And as it discharges into the VCAs, uh, the VCAs open up. And then the voltage drops, right? Because the, the charge leaves the capacitor and so the, 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 the volume uh, dies down. Um, but if we, uh, uh, yeah, and if we do it this way, then the cap kind of discharges quite quickly because it's not very big and it has like two paths to, to go through basically. Mm -hmm. And so it dies down. It's very quick percussive. Um, and then what they do, like what they do to kind of like pad out the, the, the tail, like to make it more noticeable is uh, they add this other bigger capacitor. So this one here is a 470 nanofarads. And this one over here is a one microfarad. Um, and they also add uh, this 33K uh, resistor before the big capacitor. And so, so basically... You... Sorry, sorry, go on. No? Could you replace the resistor with a variable resistor potentiometer to have a... Exactly. Variable? That is what we're going to try. Simon also wants to it. try that. Yes. So uh, let me put... Uh, Found one. By the way, <laughs> kind of, right? Fun. It's kind of well, cowbelly. But it's just one. It's just one frequency, right? Shh. No, no, I'm not saying that to knock it. But like, it's interesting because like the <laughs> the the Roland people like thought that it sounds more cowbelly if it's like two pitches mixed for whatever reason. Did you know? Yeah. Fun fact. Do you see this thing? It's thing? the Roland, it's the Rhythm 77. 
So it's the first drum machine they ever did. Oh, the 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 boxy one, the one that you put on your whatever. Yeah, put on an organ type oh. thing. Wait, do you have one? Yeah, it's here. Oh wait, let me enhance. Enhance. <laughs> I still like can't... some sort of sci-fi whatever <laughs> movie. It's still too oh, small. Right. I can't I see it. Zoom in. Go around the corner with the camera. Zoom in. Does it also have a cowbell? I don't know. I I think I could. If everybody lowers their volume or whatever, I could actually have you listen to it straight up, I believe. Sure. But it, it might be kind of scary because I don't remember where the volume is. This should be volume. Uh, let's derail the stream. Here we go. Input seven, maybe? It's very faint. <laughs> so here's, I can't hear it when you hear it. We heard it, yeah hear me when you hear it yes it's very confusing but yeah we heard oh. it we heard it but the i think it's like a supposed to be a clave like the sound that it that it has right yeah, yeah. guru maracas symbol hi-hat guru snare bass is the sounds right and it like it has like this weird interface where you can't directly program it right no that's for noobs. Only noobs program their drums. Pros, a, you know, we have a button for samba, and then we just dance. It's way better. So, so you can you can select the pattern, but then you can like turn the the things on and off, right? Or like change the volume of the parts. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. I also got this one just the other day, actually. The the Soundmaster sticks. That one you can program though. Oh. That's really really cool. In my opinion, this is becoming a weird magpie show stop <laughs> stream, but surprisingly powerful, really shitty, cheap analog drum machine. Right. Actually. By, by whom? Who's the company? Soundmaster. Oh. Naturally. Never heard of this one. But remember, I showed you a yellow one after last stream. I don't want to show the public the yellow one because I really want a yellow one, but it seems to be extremely rare. Yeah. But this is like the pro version of just regular drums but you like input it's like that roland whatever cr70 i don't remember what it's called do you know with the blue yellow button cool i think so cool thing yeah yeah but this one you can get for a couple of hundred bucks that one is for like a couple of thousand dollars <laughs> not worth it until enough people hear about it and drive up the price no this one i don't think it's possible it's too plastic <laughs> nobody's gonna you know self-respect and stuff like that <laughs> right and drive it too crazy where were we sorry i completely lost track uh we were trying to so you both seem to be very passionate about like changing the the uh the yeah, decay the decay. The, decay. Yeah. the decay even though you can't hear it but uh uh yeah we're gonna try it so let's try it so just to reiterate so basically mm. what, what, what we'll try to do is like we'll try to change the value of this uh, resistor over here um, because if the resistor is bigger then uh, this capacitor should discharge slower and so the VCA should stay open for longer and if the if the resistor is smaller then you know it should be quicker that's the yeah. theory but like it, it's a bit it's a bit messy because you know there's also an interaction between if the resistor is bigger, then less charge will actually flow into the capacitor in the beginning. And so the charge inside the cap will be less than it is if the resistor is smaller. And what so- What happens if you swap them? Noob question, but- If you swap them, I think it doesn't make a difference because it's, just, it's in series. <laughs> like, it's just like, so either it's harder to push current into it or it's harder to push current out of it on the other side. But like, in effect, it's going to be the same, I think. 
But the thing is also like, since we have the button, the push button, we can just push it for longer and so make sure that it charges up and so it's gonna, you know, it's gonna work. Um, all right. Uh, and sorry, um, are you using, do you have bipolar power supply right now? Or, yes. Or battery? No, I have, I have a bench power supply and I'm so happy that I have it because uh, it has like an overcurrent protection thing. And so every time I do something stupid, it just makes like this angry clicking noise and then nothing, nothing burns. It's great. <laughs> it's just like most things in this room. Uh, they start clicking when they are on fire <laughs> also. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So, so he, he, yeah, sorry. Sorry, have you, have you used this um, software for simulating circuits before or you just started breadboarding from the schematic? No, last time we did a lot of like the, the, the simulator thing just okay. to like get the frequencies right and get the VCA working. And we're going to get back to it like when we look at the filter because the filter just like scares me straight up like this thing here. Yeah. This, this section, this is crazy. So, but yeah, that's, that's in a second. So for now, let's do the, let's do the, the, the decay. So here's a... Okay. Can you do one thing before you do the the K? Actually, speaking on on the on the power, couldn't you try to see if the cowbell as it is set up right now works on just a nine volt battery, oh. just for the well. But you, it or, uses all pumps, right? So yeah, you we to, would have to make a virtual ground for it. Or you just use two nine volt batteries. It also works, but it's messy. Yeah. Yeah. But it will work, Simon. Like it it you know it's gonna work like the only thing that's gonna be messed up is like the frequency of the uh of the oscillators because if you drop the supply voltage then the thresholds shift around for the schmidt triggers and then you know so you'd have to adjust it but it's it, it would work um all right so here 100k potentiometer maybe that's too much i'm not sure let's see um so i will uh wait where is the here's the thing so this is the 33K and I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put in the potentiometer over here. Boom. And then we are going to send this into the potentiometer. Oh, by the way, uh, Simon, the, the, Hi. you were also in the stream that I did with uh, Robin, right? Yeah, my um, for whatever reason, I got kicked out of the stream like every like one to two minutes. And at some point I developed the strategy where like I already knew like I'm going to get kicked out. And then I had just had to like open up a new tab and quickly like paste in the link and then quickly <laughs> go through the thing of like getting into the stream again. It was so stressful. It was insane. Like speed running how to stay in the stream. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Terrible. Right. I wonder why though. I have like no I'm on phone internet now, so I'm surprised that I'm not disappearing into oblivion. How um, much? How much data do you know. have? Unlimited. Oh, <laughs> naturally. Is that, a, is that a thing in Sweden? It's, what, isn't that a global thing? No, no? in Germany, no. Uh huh. I mean, I, our internet is really fucked anyway. So, like, if you look at the amount of um, fiber internet that we have in Germany, it's it's terrible. It's like, I, I can't even say exactly how bad, but it's like on the list, it's like so far down, it's laughable. And then also everything is so expensive. Like you pay like 40, 50 euros a month for your internet connection and it's gonna be unstable. It's gonna be slow. Your provider is gonna just Ooh. be horrible to deal with. It's not good. That's a bummer. That's yeah. why I found a loophole for the whole phone situation. I just, if you do like a company, if you have a company, because yeah. I have a company, kind of cool, humble brag, uh, then um, you can have a phone on your in your company. You can have unlimited phones. Depends on the size of the company, right. I bet. But uh, it's way cheaper than as a private per, private person. Do you say private person? You say private person, yeah yeah a very private person but it's way 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 cheaper and as my company is just one person th that guy uh very annoying guy but um it, it's just a, such a deal for me and the phone thing are you working for the phone company now 
No. Mm. <laughs> Did you did it? No. But I guess it's good information. Everybody who wants to like have a company. That's like. A I mean, bonus. I work in Sweden. It's like a, it, this is a sales pitch for Sweden. Oh. <laughs> Sure. Phone company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't move to Germany. Move to Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. Five G. All right, let's stuff. let's try the decay. So I think I set this up correctly. Uh, again, uh, Eva and Simon, you can't hear it, but you have to take my word for it. Let's see. Okay. Couldn't you put an LED on the output so we can see it? <laughs> an <laughs> LED. Going. Well, I could add one to the to the envelope theoretically, but yeah. it's interesting. It doesn't really. Well, it does work. But try an extreme value just for the sake of an extreme value. But I'm not sure it does work. It sounds the same. Hmm. This is weird. Wait, let me check. So, the thing comes from the other cap basically like this is where the where the switch goes in and then i am routing this through the uh, potentiometer wait if i remove it is the pot connected to the ground it doesn't need to be it just needs to be connected to the to the cap okay okay uh, but you can try it wait Watching your writing doesn't need to be no this is shorter Yeah, this has more of a tail. It's not that noticeable. Like I think you could change the button. Go mega. Don't you have a one mega? Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one. Let's 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 go huge with the pot. That's good. Uh, yeah, one mega. And what's the value of the of the capacitor? Thirty three micro. No. <laughs> that would be a bit too big. No, this is a one one um, one microfarad. Okay. Uh, this is a one mega ohm. So if I turn this up all the way and then I push it for a little while. Oh yeah. Now it's like, now it's like, but it's weird because it's like, it's interesting because it, it, it first it drops very quickly and then it stabilizes at like a very low volume. But that makes sense because uh -huh. you know, you, you have the one mega ohm between the cap and the VCA. And so, the 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 voltage after the mega ohm resistor is going to be much lower than the one that's at the cap because uh the vca kind of acts like a resistance to ground right and so you have one mega ohm resistance here and then uh you have you have your other resistance to ground here and so you're going to basically divide down the voltage so that makes sense mm -hmm. but yeah it does work so it's better sounding with bigger value potentiometer. Well, not necessarily better sounding. I didn't say that. <laughs> this is the ringing ring. out <laughs> on a low yeah. volume. So, so I think I think if you wanted to like like kind of get serious about manipulating the 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 envelope, you would have to get a bit more uh, involved because the, you know I feel like this with the with the resistance before it is just like kind of a trick that works for this specific uh, envelope that they were trying to get go for. But if, if you want to make it adjustable, I think you have to like do more. But if you play it through your compressor, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that... that's completely over engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Just add a compressor at the end. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I saw some suggestion, suggestions in the chat. Let me check. Um, Questions. There were actually yeah. a lot of questions. <laughs> you just that we just, just take the two oscillators analog. <laughs> Cow drone. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, okay, so someone asked: the high pitch oscillator is too low in volume compared to the 808 cowboy. Is it low pass filtered? Uh, no, I'm actually like what I'm doing on the breadboard is like I am mixing them into the buffer like through uh, 100k resistors. I think these are both 100k's. It could be that. I messed up and one of them is like lower in value or something like that. And so the, the high pitched is high pitched sound is a bit muffled, but yeah. Uh, more questions. I think there were more. Um, did some research on the two cap configuration. It produces more long release compared to a single cap circuit. Oh, I think that's in reference to what we just explained. So I'm too late. I'm sorry. 
Um, there was more. There's a and, lot happening now also. Yeah, I can't keep up. So Analog says, oh no, that was in reference to your drum machine, I think. Um, oh, you're going that far back. Oh, Alex asks, who is the third person that joined? Uh, oh yeah, maybe you want to introduce yourself because that would be nice. I didn't know. I didn't know. I gonna. I just wanted to observe. I didn't mean to join that. Um, but yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your name? What do you do? Uh, I'm Eva, and I build uh, instruments and effects and uh, modular synthesizers, and uh, I teach one workshop sometimes. Yeah. right it's right. actually I, I, I mentioned yes. this to you already i think but it's funny because someone i think it was like a year ago like someone that I, that that attended a workshop that i did here in berlin uh told me that like they found my channel because you apparently like they went to a workshop of yours in london and you recommended my channel to them <laughs> and that's why they came to my workshop which was fun that's cool yeah so do you I run i'm sorry so do you run workshops in Berlin? So I used to do it much more, um, like before the pandemic. Uh, like that was kind of how I got started uh, before I, I did my channel because uh, I was just like starting out learning this stuff and I, I uh, found that uh, I can myself like learn it better if I uh, explain it to somebody. And so I did these workshops yeah. and then the pandemic hit and that forced me to like stop doing the workshops. And then I was looking for like a alternate approach and I, I started the YouTube channel because, you know, I just had like a bunch of things that I wanted to show to people, but I couldn't. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, uh, I never really got back into the workshops. I did a couple. Uh, I'm actually, I'm doing another one at Superbooth uh, this Friday, which I oh. think is going to be fun. Yeah. And I, like, hopefully afterwards I can get into it more again because, um, yeah, so it, people a lot of people wanted to join but like the capacity was very limited and so i had to like turn a lot of people down and tell them i'm gonna do workshops at some point so yeah i'm still trying to figure out like a location because that's a bit difficult um mm -hmm. but um yeah that's the situation and, uh, Living you, room. you run workshops you using breadboards or you make pcbs for workshops just breadboards oh. Yeah. A new rack or nine volts? Yeah. Uh, so I usually give people batteries because uh, otherwise um, they might break things. So I, I prefer to give them just nine volt, two nine volt batteries, and then we do the trick okay. where you connect them to get okay. you know dual supplies. That's cool. Mm. But uh, we should get Eva link in chat. What's your channel name and stuff? Are you you primarily on Instagram, if I understood correctly before, mm. or are you on YouTube also? Well, yeah, I have some, yeah, I have YouTube, some, some videos in the Etsy store, but um, soon I hope to distribute through Alex from Signal Sounds rather than through Etsy. Okay. So, but yeah, just Instagram and Etsy. But yeah, you want to, you, For now. you want to, yeah. ah, I can post your Instagram in the chat. Wait, give me a second. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Or have analog do it because he's the one and only moderator in chat. I'm 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 not sure he's a detective though. Do you know what he, he is? He I is? promise you. Okay. But uh, also DDC is here. You know what I used to do when I live stream before? I turned everyone moderator in chat <laughs> so everyone could just link whatever they wanted. That's fun. Did it work out? Indeed. Yeah, yeah. It was Did perfect. it go wrong? Okay. Um, okay, let's get back to the backlog of questions because there were a couple ones. Um, so, someone wants us to analyze the 808 clap. That's not going to happen today, but maybe at some point. Yeah, um, let's pivot. <laughs> just on the spot. Let's switch. Uh, then, can you put a diode in parallel to charge the capacitor and then have a discharge oh that's a good that's a good suggestion now we're talking that's good so just to explain to everybody like uh, what the suggestion is so if we look at the uh, uh, schematic again you can see you know up here as i explained before we have this cap and this cap and we replaced this resistor with a um, with a potentiometer and as i explained the issue is kind of that the 
the the resistor blocks the charging process or it, it slows down the charging process right and so the suggestion here was can't we just do the following can't we just say we're gonna add something here and we're gonna put a diode in this direction like so uh, so that we bridge the resistor so basically it will charge up instantly but it will discharge through the pot and this should um, have an effect let's see good theory also right. young christiansen wrote like the envelope is generated by q1 q5 c9 c34 and more i think that's like all this stuff that we are just talking about now like the caps it's like the envelope is generated by everything yeah, <laughs> by the entire circuit <laughs> Yeah. Also, super string space corrupt. In my experience, in my experiments, I eventually decided to call Fidi full MIDI control cowbell. Is the dope idea actually? Oh, I think I saw the video. I think I, I think I saw the video on YouTube. It was crazy. Like it was like pitch controlled, and like he added like all these effects. It sounded great. <laughs> the length. The, oh, I also really want to do the most. Ah, oh, cowbell. <laughs> The oscillators, they have fixed frequency and they all have the same frequency. Well, you, yes, but you know, they, they have 32 millisecond. <laughs> 1.85 millisecond. Yeah, no, it, we're just joking because like in the, on the thing here, um, yeah, on the, on the, uh, on the service manual, you can see here, they put the frequency in milliseconds and not in Hertz. So last time we were kind of, <laughs> that tripped us up because we were like, what, what the hell is 1.85 milliseconds? Oh, yeah. All the professionals measure the frequencies in milliseconds. Yeah, but I think someone mentioned in the <laughs> comments actually afterwards that apparently like back in the day in the factory it was like easier to measure the, 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 the wave length, the wave cycle length uh, as opposed yeah. to the frequency. So let me add in the diode here, wait. And switch to the breadboard and uh, so we want to go from here to there i think i'm going to just bridge the pot boom okay let's see what that does interesting <laughs> it's the same it doesn't really Well, no, it's a bit, I would say it's more pronounced. So you get like the, the, the tail is like slightly higher in volume, I would say. But it doesn't sound nice. good. I, I don't think it sounds good. It just sounds like broken in a way. <laughs> so if you like that, then that's good. But yeah. Well, you're borderline circuit bending at this point. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Uh, were there more questions? Did you see anything? I see a side note. A side note. Oh, there's a side yeah. note from Christopher. Absolutely like my VCF. Thank you. I'm currently addicted to building the kits and modding different things. 160k for cutoff knob CV scale is a very handy mod to extend the sweep. I build. I build five kits a day at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's very addictive. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> um, okay. Christopher says, can you put a second diode the opposite way? I think if you do that, you bypass the, the, the pot, so it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's not going to pass. Yeah. Mm. All right, maybe... Simon, please. Um, I'm just proving a point. It does resonate, IRL. <laughs> right. Um, should we maybe, like, stop diddling around and, like, look at the filter? Because I feel like that's... We're, we're trying to, like, we're trying to avoid that, right? diddling around is my middle name i know <laughs> all right um i think we're satisfied with the or i'm satisfied at least with the envelope for now so let's do this so um what scares me most about this thing is basically just how at first like last time i thought that this path and this path like that they are completely separate and that they are like not interacting in any way and then like you know you can just split them up but then i realized that there's actually like a connection here and here right so and you can also see well maybe that's due to the 
frequency of the oscillators, but you can see that the caps here are different sizes. And so I'm a bit worried because I, you know, I thought we could just like simplify it a little bit, but may maybe we can't. Um, I would say I'm going to switch over to the simulator. I'm quickly going to set this up for, yeah, maybe just for one side at first. And we're just going to see if we can kind of get a feel for what it does. That sound okay? I think it sounds amazing. All right, great. But uh, super string space corrupt. I think I found your thing now. The funk box prototype. If you want the the real experience. What's that? Funk box prototype. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot. Uh, yeah, it's the super duper cowbell. Oh, ah, uh, yeah. I think that's the 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 YouTube video I talked about. Yes. Um, okay, let me switch over to the simulator. But are you going to do it in the simulator now first or straight up on the breadboard? No, simulator first. Because okay. I want to I wanna see just how it works. Um, okay, so this is going to be a bit boring. So let's maybe talk about something on the side. <laughs> how, how were your days? How are you doing? Uh, uh, have you both watched the crazy episode of succession yet <laughs> please no spoilers but i have um, wild right <laughs> crazy shit did yeah. you watch it uh, ever yes of course i'm addicted completely nice. yeah. so are you are you already on the latest episode yes uh, every time you know and on monday i i watch it immediately <laughs> I th just I th stop what whatever you're doing at that point <laughs> i think i'm actually someone one episode asking, behind someone is asking uh, what is this simulator it's a uh, false that right yes yes circuit js false mm -hmm. uh can either of you maybe post a link in the chat to to the thing to the succession episode no <laughs> <laughs> come on to what thing? To the super string space corrupt? T to the simulator. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Just uh, to circuit JS so that the person that asks for the simulator mm. has a link. Oh. I don't know how to do it. Tell analog to do it. Yeah, an analog. <laughs> Or ever, I mean, you you also have a link, right? Like you know how to find it. I posted. I already posted. Uh, Very good. Mm. All right, I think this is already done. Let's see. Mm. Oh wait, I, I I fucked up. Uh, I um put the op amp but in it, the wrong direction. If, if both of you use you use the same simulator thing, I've never used a simulator except like f for driving a forklift and stuff <laughs> but uh couldn't you speed run this like you we do a thing that would be so fun to see uh like whatever uh it it kick drum or something and then you both we do like split screen and we see who does it fastest <laughs> in the simulator so like a game show yeah but really boring oh it sounds <laughs> that sounds really boring yeah <laughs> <laughs> i would watch <laughs> Mm, okay, I think now we should be able to see what it does. Hopefully, uh, let me increase the frequency. Um, you 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 can see, like it's a bit lagging behind probably, but you can see the the thing moving now, right? Mm. Okay, so this is the input, and then let's look at the output. In an undocked scope. Uh, yeah, this is weird. Ooh, this it is... looks like a cowbell. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, like if I understood correctly, this is a bandpass filter, right? Like that's what people say in yes, the chat. Yes, So yeah, I always find that like you know, like with low pass filters, it's very easy to to recognize it because it just like sands down the edges. With high pass filters, it's also easy to see because you know you get like these spikes, but this is just looks just like random, random bullshit. No, 
I think it's pretty. It looks like uh, some sort of graffiti tagging. True. Line. Yeah. But I wonder if the... Oh, the input signal is just too loud. Okay. Because I, I was wondering, it looks like it's clipping, right? You can see here that it's like bumping into the <laughs> supply rails. So maybe let me try and tone this down a little bit. Oh, I that. agree with analog. See that waveform? Right away. Cowbell. <laughs> My mind. It's it's still like I I feel like it's distorting even worse now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oof. The hell. So this is hundred less cowbell. <laughs> it's a hundred millivolts going in, and then we have eight volts coming out. Why? That's crazy. I don't get it. And also, also this is this is kind of clearly like a. Oh, I think the. I'm stupid. Okay, if this is a bandpass filter, then if you put something in with the wrong frequency, if you will, it's going to be outside of the what it allows through, right? And then you're going to get this shit. So, uh, wait. Let me switch back to the pad. So I think that I replicated this part or this input and this is connected to this VCA and to this oscillator and this oscillator is the, I think the fast one. I think this is the 800 Hertz one. And right now I'm putting in a 400 Hertz signal, which would make sense because if the filter is tuned to pass okay. most of the 800 Hertz, if you make it too low, it's going to just high pass filter it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So just to prove that assumption, we will increase this to 800 Hertz, I guess. Let's see. Oh, it's almost the same. Uh, we see the breadboard now on live. Oh, sorry. Boom. So I just bumped it up to 800 Hertz and it's, uh, I think it's a little bit different, but it's like mostly the same. Maybe if I blow this up a little bit, that helps. I can maybe increase the, no, it doesn't really help. Okay, let me let me try and bump this up even more. Let me try and go up to a thousand hertz. It doesn't really do much, no? 2K? I mean, where you started off, it was very pretty. Yeah, because it was like massively uh, clipping. Mm. Okay. Right. So if I bump clipping this to the point of pretty, if I bump this up to five volts again, then you can see that now it's just it's just like running into the rails constantly. Yeah. That's, cool. That's what happens. <laughs> uh, okay, and if I if I drop it, I, I'm confused because like I would assume that it should affect signals of different frequencies differently. Let me try 100 Hertz. Interesting. Bump it to 800. Well, maybe that's just like how it's supposed to look. I'm not sure. <laughs> but Yeah, sure. But try it. But also the the. What amount... if you swap the resistor and the feedback to variable one? Well, I mean, we we could for one, we could just like drop it by 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 a shit ton because this is just like this is crazy loud. So now if I bump it back up to five volts, yeah, then it's still crazy loud, but it's not clipping. All right, let me quickly try and set up the other path, um, and then we can see like what the output looks like. So we've got the 800 Hertz here, and then I'm going to set up another path. And this one is, I think it was 450 Hertz. Oh no, not voltage, Hertz 450. Or was it 540? I think it was 540. Len Pop says, hi Moritz, your videos have inspired me to build my own modular synth. Ooh. Not sure if I should thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That's the most wonderful hate comment ever. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. But yeah, on the real, uh, 
great to hear like that's why i do the videos i now have a second mortgage on my house <laughs> uh oh Ooh. interesting wait let me okay so this is actually wrong what i did here well it's not wrong but it's not how they do it in the in the service manual so bump this here and then put this here and then connect the output to that. Oh, no. Boom. I think that should be it. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Do you see that? Oh. That's interesting. So wait, let me let me turn this thing here all the way down to zero. Slowly but surely becoming a light show. Which is kind of cool. A what? A light show. Oh, yeah, true. Wait, I'll turn on the current speed. Okay. Okay, so this is interesting. Okay, so now, right, because they're connected here. That's what I meant earlier, right? So you can see here that we've got this uh, connection, uh, which, like, even if this thing is off, like, this still interacts with this path. So you can't split it. So it's one big thing, unfortunately. But you can see in the output that now, we basically just low pass filter the the 800 hertz signal right so it's it used to be a square and now it's like rounded off so low pass filtering and then maybe let's switch on the other one and we'll turn off the 800 hertz one mm, that also looks low pass filtered though maybe like the shape is a little weird, no? That's interesting. <laughs> Looks like uh, <laughs> like it's got a tiny bit of lower resolution. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's like this little there's like, like this little kink at the top, right? And yeah. at the bottom where you see like this weird. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. interesting. Is that what a That's the cowbell kink. <laughs> Ooh. Is that Sexy. is that what a low pass filter looks like? Like in the output? I don't know. I've never looked. That's weird. Uh, no, low pass. I meant band pass. Okay. I, may, I mean, maybe like since the paths are connected, maybe it also just really works if both are like running at the same time, right? And yeah, that's interesting because you can see how like some parts of the wave are rounded and some parts are like very spiky. Mm. So this is a very pedestrian analysis of the circuit, but we see spikes and we see round. So it must be a band. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So one thing I'm noticing is like, you can see how like these, like the current here goes crazy, but there's nothing flowing here. What's up with that? Oh, if I increase the speed. It's also, it's quite an interesting pattern of like five or six different ones. Yeah. Like or are they all different? This does its own thing and then this does its own thing and then this also. It's really weird. Okay, but wait, let me, let me quickly think about, it's, it's, it's really hard, I think, to reason about this because like this cap and this resistor by itself would be a high pass, right? So cap and series resistor to ground, that's a high pass. But then if you add in a resistor before it, you limit the, what was it that you limit? I think you limit the, uh, you don't apply the high pass to the entire signal, but just like to a certain part of it. And then it's the same between these two, basically. But then you get into this thing with the feedback path, which is always like when it gets like really messy because whatever happens at this node, which depends on what happens at these two inputs, will mess with this cap. And so this will create or take away a voltage over here. And this means that the op amp is involved in what's going in on at this node again because it's a pushing pushing and pulling against this cap and then also that feedback is being fed into the 
inverting input here. So yeah, um, I don't think we're gonna break this down, but maybe we can just set it up and see how it sounds. There's a bunch of chat also. Oh, can you read it? No, I forgot how to <laughs> just see the messages. No, no, but there's some questions like what starting voltage are the camps set to on the left? Starting voltage? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then analog says some stupid analog type stuff. Are those 10K only passive mixing, question mark? Uh, no. They are, uh, like I said, so the, uh, maybe we can, we can, we can, uh, we can take this and remove it from the entirety, uh, from the entire thing. Oh, Whoa. It. And ugh. so we'll just take this and we will move it down here and we will connect this thing here to ground and then we'll get the output of that. Mm undocked scope and so yeah you can see that this is uh this kind of looks like a high pass but if i uh, take this thing here out or maybe i can just like set up two separate versions of the same thing so here and then down here i'm going to bypass the resistor and i'm going to add a scope here and you can see that um this is way high passier than this one, right? So uh, uh, this is way spikier than, than this. So you can see that more low frequencies go come through in this part. And if I increase the uh, resistor value here, um, you can see that uh, even stronger. So now this is like much closer to, to the input square wave uh, than this thing down here. But you will also notice that the volume is much lower, right? So you can see here that this is between, this is like 200 millivolts peak to peak. This is almost uh, 10 millivolts peak to peak. And um, the way that this kind of works is that if you add in a resistance before the high pass, um, you allow the low end kind of through. It's kind of like a, you know, like a shell filter, like when you use a shell filter, like in your DAW, like what it does is like, it, it, it's, it's like a filter that doesn't cut off, but instead like it kind of like goes into this shelf section like for a high pass that would be like starting here uh letting a lot of lot of frequencies through dropping down but then instead of just like going through zero it just like um straightens out again and so it allows low frequencies through but like in an attenuated way so you can see this here the low end goes through but it's very quiet basically does that make sense i, I don't know uh, who asked? <laughs> uh, Pexy the Builder, does it make sense? We'll see. Soon Any more enough. questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 I think it's the high pass part of the band pass. Like I'm a high, high pass filter cuts off the back end. Very necessary for realistic cowbell tones. Okay. Uh, is that it? Is, is the cowbell in the drum machine realm supposed to actually mimic the sound of a cowbell in reality? <laughs> I wonder. I don't, I, I don't really think so. So but then they failed miserably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I, I think it's so interesting because like, you know, at the time, like when they were developing this drum machine, um, everyone else was already kind of on the verge of switching to sampling based drum machines, right? So people were like expecting real instruments and Roland like still went down this path of like, oh, let's synthesize these sounds. And I think with the cowbell, they just like, I don't know if they took the piss or if they were just, oh, let's, you know, this sounds close enough to a cowbell or maybe they just had the sound first and then they decided to call it a cowbell, I don't know. But- um, What's the story with uh, the engineer who threw some coffee on the, circuitry and then it sounded really good because there was some short circuit and then they tried to mimic that <laughs> some story like this from roland was that about the cowbell uh, yeah i think so oh, i think so interesting Ooh, good yeah. legend i like it <laughs> but it, it's very um 
it's almost close to those types of like space. I only have it was space drum. <laughs> bing, bing, space bing, drum. Bing, bing, bing. Like it's close to the space drum type sound. What's that? Like the cowbell. Ah, it's similar sound. I don't know what the is it an instrument? The space drum. Yeah, now it is. Like, why isn't it just called the space drum? Maybe it could be. Um, all right, are there more questions? No, but it made sense, Pexy the Builder said. All right, very good. Um, mm. Then let's maybe, I'll just switch over to the breadboard and I'll just like, start building this out and then we can just like talk more. Can I just say that uh, Manny is writing that real cowbells is far more tonally complex. They are all different sounds. It's how the calves can find their mothers in the mist. <laughs> I personally never let my cows out in the mist. So this is recipe for disaster. Yeah, sounds bad. So is that like the opinion of someone who owns cows or is it, is it a I don't joke? I think it was an opinion. So right. we, I think it was a, a fact. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, many lived in the mountains for a bit, oh. which is, um, very misty <laughs> yeah. full of cows that's true I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> you end up with damn cows did you speak about um the types of capacitors that you use because you always use quantum capacitors right yeah so uh, uh yeah. just you know there's this store here in berlin where i like to buy my parts and okay. it's a uh, it's What's a the name? It's called Zegua. It's a very okay. small, like po mom and pop type thing. So um, it's not a big chain. Like it's just like a, a couple of people that run the store. And I, w I would love to say that. Um, I mean, it's it's a great store. Like they have a lot of things, and and like they mostly have the things that you need. They don't have to back order them. It's really good. But also the issue is that the people that work there can sometimes be um, pretty rude and uh, okay. this one time i went there and i was just starting out and I, I wanted to buy some capacitors basically and um so i bought a bunch of other uh, components and then i wanted to, to get capacitors and then i didn't know that they were like different types and um i i was just like hey i need capacitors and the, the guy was like well what kind of capacitor i was like well I, can you mm. give me recommendations and he was like well if you don't know then i'm not sure if you should buy them <laughs> You know, like this kind of oh, attitude. Wow. And at some point he yeah. he told me that um that uh how did he phrase it? Like the audio pope would be angry with me if I bought anything but foil caps for building an audio circuit. And so I took that advice and I decided to only buy foil and film caps from that point on. So that's why I use them. But like in all seriousness, like they're handy because you know they're non polarized, so you don't have to worry about like which way you put them in. Yeah. And in general, like if you put them in series with the signal, like they don't care that the charge is like shifting left and right. Whereas like electrolytic capacitors, like they can uh, explode, I think actually. It never happened to me, but I heard that they can explode if you uh, abuse them. Well, if, if you apply too much voltage, it happened only once. It happened to you? Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, it's just the voltage, too much voltage. Right. Was it scary? It sounds kind of scary. That was exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, did you did you did you immediately know what happened? Well, it popped, uh, popped, popped out. Yeah, the the top like poof, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Did it happen to you too, Simon? No. <laughs> Never. Didn't sound very but convincing. I was playing with um, Nixons as well, and um, I was using some CMOS access to, to drive them, high voltage stuff, and I ended up uh, breaking the actual IC. Oh. Yeah, That's always anyway. a problem. That's but what happened with that? Did that one just start melting? I'm assuming it didn't pop. No, it just looked like uh, it was broken, just uh, the, the top of the semiconductor is broken. Mm -hmm. 
anyway, that's exciting. The exciting life of builders. Yeah. Yes. Exciting. Adventures. Why don't we call uh, those types of camps popcorn capacitors from now on? Because oh, that yeah. sounds cute. It does. Mm. Also, Analog wrote that you should go back with your Erica Sins modules and do a pretty woman routine. So that could be. Do fun. a what? Pretty woman. What? It's a famous movie. Julia Roberts. I don't know what that means. I should go back and do a oh, routine yeah, yeah. with them. Just uh, watch the movie. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, yeah. I, think I've, I think I've never seen it. What? Sorry. Shame. Yeah, that is, that is kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't use a mouser or... Um... Any other online stores to get your parts? No, you can see that here. So that's the name of the store here. You don't buy online parts? I rarely do it um, because well, like, I, just at some point I bought all this stuff from the store and now I just have my stash and I, I rarely need anything. Okay. And so, yeah, you, you don't produce. I think that's the, you yeah, don't right. need. I don't solder, like I just use the breadboard and that's it basically. Yeah. So I'm good. Okay. So you never soldered SMD parts? No, thank God, no. <laughs> I'm not too keen on yeah. that. Actually, it's, it's interesting. Actually easier. It's, 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 it's easier, it's you easier think? It's easier than through hole and faster. Oh, really? Yeah, really, and it's much faster. I'm telling you, it's true. Faster, I can agree with, but easier depends on <laughs> a lot of ice nights yeah. and shaky hands, how many beers <laughs> you've drunk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. If you have flux or not. <laughs> I think it's easier. Stuff. It's so much harder to see if you did a bad joint though. I think it's uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's much easier to make a mistake with through holes. But... You think? That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think so because you need to apply more solder and yeah, you can easier break the um copper uh roots so i think yeah on the, on the pcb itself that might be true actually but i feel like it's a way more of a hurdle like it's it's i think what you're preaching is probably super healthy to tell people because it is scary with s and d like you, you get the the reaction if someone is is to tell you to do it you're like no i don't want to yes. if you've never done it before I mean, also in terms of collecting all the parts, it's so much easier to have just two boxes with SMD parts rather yeah, than. Sure. You, can't, crazy. you can't breadboard with them, can you? No, you cannot. You cannot really. It's actually an issue because um, so I was talking with Erica since about like doing a delay module, and mm -hmm. they suggested that we do uh, BBD, a bucket bucket brigade delay. Yeah, and yeah. The problem is for that you need chips, right? And the issue is that most of these chips, like when I looked around, I, it was kind of hard to like get them at scale, and also like they're very expensive and whatever. And uh, yeah. I talked to Erica, and they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah no worries." So uh, Alpha, like this company, they are about to release uh, like a um, a new line of BBD chips, basically. And oh, that's good to know. Yes, and they're they're gonna. What's that? Uh, I have to look it up. It's like AS37 something. But it's not out yet. It's it's, it's coming soon. Um, but yeah, I got excited. And they were like, yeah, we have prototypes here. Do you want some? And I was like, yeah, sure. Send them over. And they sent them over and they're SMD. <laughs> and I can't do anything with them because I need to oh, breadboard, you know? They have it in SMD. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. But, yeah, but now I need to figure out like how am I going to breadboard with them because, you know, that's my thing. Yeah, but then you do like uh, they're saying in chat, like those breakout boards. You can still buy. You can still buy because uh, I've been I've been selling some plungers. I'm working on uh, on another one, and uh, I bought a bunch of BBDs from eBay. They are all broken, so you you really <laughs> buy them from a proper manufacturer. But that's that's really good to know. Please send me a link. I will. I will send you. I think they they have like the preliminary data sheet out. Uh, I think it's like a. Mm, I don't know if they made multiple, but the ones that I got, I have like a thousand twenty four stages, which is I think not too much. So we need to combine multiple. But you know. Mm -hmm. 
But for Flanger, that should be okay, but for delay, you need more. Yeah. But you know, we had an idea to make a BBD from scratch. So sampling holds a lot, like thousands of samples. <laughs> <laughs> that would be actually interesting. <laughs> like it's like a my, no, no computer my... type project yeah. to undertake. <laughs> actually, I, I, have the, I have the following pitch. So I have this idea, you know, because with the BBD thing, it like what frustrates me a little bit when I think about doing a video on it is that it's it's the chip does so much. I mean, yeah, it's always the same, right? It's just like a very simple stage just multiplied. But to me, that's a kind of um, not satisfying to talk about. And so I had like this alternate idea, which um, I'm not sure if it's feasible, but my idea was just to basically build a digital one, but from scratch. So take a Take a take an ADC, so an analog to digi digital converter. Um, take the input, mm -hmm. convert it into that. Put that thing into like a RAM chip, um, and then have a RAM mm -hmm. chip that allows you to either like simultaneously write and read, or do a thing where you like one cycle you write, one cycle you read, um, and then you just need like two separate uh, address registers. Those are kind of like the write head and the read head on a on a tape delay the 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 right head is always like running at the same speed through the through the ram chip and writing to it and then the uh, the the other address like the read address is like a fixed amount behind the the read address basically and that thing is connected to a dac so to a digital to analog converter and that puts it out in the end mm -hmm. and then you should just have a delay i guess um but the problem is that i was like starting to look into it and RAM chips are a nightmare. Like there's so many different types and they all have like their own limitations and restrictions. And then there's like some that are ridiculously expensive and some are really cheap, but I couldn't, so far I couldn't figure out like which one I have to use. So it's a, it's a longer running thing, I guess. I would start with the really cheap. RAM chip, yeah. yeah. In case I burn them. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this ability on the breadboard is surprisingly um, hard because people these... are writing about the PT twenty three ninety nine also. Yeah, I know about that one, but that's like just you set it up and then it works, right? So yeah, that's but that's Very not convenient. Really for yeah. That's what? That's not really for flangers. That's more for no, yeah, yeah. But the flanger as well, another problem with BBD is the high pitch noise. So you also need a you also need a compounder chip or this filter. Yeah, do, um, yeah. Aren't there like countless online threads in regards to clicking sounds? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't that what they normally do? They just like throw a low pass at the end of the BBD and then that's it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. All or right. Just enjoy it. You know. <laughs> just enjoy the clicking. Man. <laughs> oh, I messed up. Oh no, shit. This is really tough to because these two paths, like with the uh, with the band pairs, like they are interconnected at so many points, and so I have to like replicate that, and it really sucks. All right. But it's very peaceful to look at. Like I don't get why you don't do full on silent videos of just breadboarding <laughs> as some sort of ASMR. Yeah. Um I might. Um... Patreon exclusive. <laughs> yeah, actually like the uh, Simon, I think last time I told you about the, the kick drum that I was working on. Did I? Mm. Let's assume not, so okay. that you can tell it from the beginning for everyone who is here now. Right. Um, so basically, I was just, um, uh, like in previous streams, I was looking at the 606 kick drum. And then on my own, I looked at the 808 kick drum. And at some point, I thought, hey, I can do that too. Uh, but I didn't want to copy it. And so I started like working off of the same core principle, but then um, like doing it my own way, basically. And I had it to a point where it was working, um, but all the parameters were only controllable via like potentiometers. I didn't have them under voltage control. And I was happy with the sound and I sent it off to Erica Synths um, to make it into a module. 
And then they came back to me and were like, yeah, that's all fine and good, but you know, come on, pitch CV we need and we need accent CV. Otherwise, you know, it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not enough. And it kind of sent me like into this spiral because I was like, fuck, like now I need to figure out these two things that I couldn't figure out so far. And I also, I wasn't sure if it was even possible to add it. I mean, accent should be possible because that's like on the, on the 808, but the pitch CV was like, mm. and um, I was sitting here for like an entire weekend, just like trying different things. And at some point I got really desperate and just like tried random stuff. And then suddenly I got the pitch CV working and I was able to like send in from a sequencer okay. like control voltage and I could play melodies with it and everything. And uh, that made me very happy because I thought that the pitch CV was going to be the really hard part. And so I had that working. I was happy. I was like, okay, now let's quickly do the accent. And then the accent took twice as long as the pitch CV <laughs> because the way that I did the trigger is like so different from the Roland implementation. And so I couldn't just, you know, look at what they did. So I had to come up with my own thing. And at some point I got it to work. How did you, how did you sort it out? Um, so the, the main issue with it was that the, the way that I do the pitch CV is I manipulate the envelope that manipulates the initial transient uh, of the kick drum, basically, like the pitch mm -hmm. of, the, of the kick drum. And so I, basically I, I, I don't allow the, the envelope to completely go down to zero. Like I force it to stay at a certain voltage and this forces the kick drum to oscillate quicker, basically. And the problem with that is that um, the, the accent also messes with the envelope. So the, the accent kind of sets like the, the maximum peak level for the envelope. And so those two things like always interacted in weird ways because then if you had an accent present, the pitch was different and whatever. And in the end, like I, I, I found a way so that they still interact a little bit, but um, so now it's, um, it's very hard to explain. They're not really separate. They still interact, but it's not so bad that it would destroy the thing. And also I kind of feel like it's like kind of funky because you, if you now combine like different uh, pitch CV sequences with different accent sequences, you get like these, um, I can't really describe it. It's, it's, it's fun to play with. <laughs> That's well, it. How do you keep yourself from leaning into it and going, wild and crazy when those things occur like i would not be able to stop myself from just completely leaning into that craziness um i think it's just like um i want to i don't want to to me it quickly feels like i give up like if i do that too fast it feels like i, I don't understand it and i'm just like i'm just like happy with it I don't want to do that. So then I'm, I have like this obsessive thing in my head where I'm like, no, I need to figure this out. And then oftentimes, even after I figured this out, I'm like, well, but it still was cool. And then I go back to the quirky thing and I do it. But I think I just don't want to have the feeling that I don't understand what's going on. So in a, in a versus, you, you value understanding higher than happy. <laughs> yes. There's like a, so sad. <laughs> there, there's this thing, I think, I think Plato, it's like a quote attributed to Plato. Like, uh, he said, it's better to be an unhappy Socrates than to be a happy pig. Yeah, I disagree. So. <laughs> I'd rather you be a happy cow. I, th <laughs> I, I, I do think that's preferable, to be honest. Understanding is happy, analog says. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. It's the content contentment. I always mess those up. The content and content. I think content is the good one. But it's in to me. It's very interesting to be able to, because I mean, I would spend four days more just not that I would understand anything to begin with. I'm I'm a moron in these types of uh, things that you're working on, but. Uh, I would spend the weekend just exploring as wild as possible. Yeah. I mean, that's super fun, no? Yeah, sounds like it. Indeed. 
Although I must say, I, uh, I stopped breadboarding much. Uh, it's, uh, when you get into more complex circuits, it's really pain in the ass. Uh, to breadboard? Yeah. And I'm maybe not that, yeah. And I think uh, I'm not that detail oriented. So I, so, you know, I'm not cutting the wires, the, the specific length, and it all becomes messy very well, yeah. quickly. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, for <laughs> testing small circuits for, <laughs> for, for ones, I prefer to make a PCB and then maybe have the PCB. It's, uh, yeah, this is my camera. It can be frustrating. I, I, I hear yeah. that a lot, ever. Like, I, I hear a lot of people. Oh, no. Like saying like, hey, isn't it much easier to just do a PCB and then, you know, you don't have to worry about parasitic capacitance and setting everything up and it being messy and, you know, uh, maybe it's not it not working the way that it would normally on the PCB. And I, I completely get that. Um, I think for me, like the, the obsession with this is just kind of coming from that my day job is being a programmer. And as a programmer, like I'm so used yeah, to, with, nice. you know, if, if you just code all day, it's like all perfect. Like there's no, um, there's no kind of weirdness. There's like, it's all kind of predictable. I think that's why like on my days off, I just like, you know, this. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, this is the dullest jamming of uh, development. I, I made an attempt to build a 909 kick drum on breadboard and not, none of it worked completely. Sure. I should have com I, I should have cut it to parts and analyze each part of the circuit rather than just <laughs> only white noise worked, um, but that's it. Uh, what what yeah. worked? The, the white noise work? worked? On the 909 white noise generator. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. But it it's all about packaging. Great. Because with values as well, um, but yeah. What? Why did you? Why did you pick that project? I really like kick drums, uh, so I thought, why not? Uh, also, I <clears throat> I built a kind of drum machine, but it had a um, so it had a symbol, and um, actually, it's not really a drum machine, more like a groove box, because it is a symbol and shift register based sequencer oscillator and uh, a low pass filter so it can kind of sounds sort of acid -y. and i wanted to have a kick drum i had a more like a drum twin very simple 20 circuit that was kind of drummy and distortion but right. it's not proper kick drum so i wanted to implement 909 kick and then have a proper drum machine but that didn't work so i need to get back to it um right. but yeah I think drum machines are the best instruments. Yeah, but they're also really uh, confusing, I think. <laughs> just if you look at the schematic, it's just like, it's uh, oh, yeah. so much going on and so much mm -hmm. jammed into like these little packages where they, you know, they always find, or they always uh, found ways to um, make things more efficient, cost efficient, whatever, but that's like to the detriment of the schematic being understandable, I feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I think we almost have it. Um, we need to wait, I messed this up. So I connected the so this is the end of this ba of this capa of this wild resistor capacitor chain, whatever. So this is the 33 nanofarads, and this is the 470k resistor, and where they join. Oh, they need to join. Yeah, they need to be connected to the. Oh, wait a second. This is wrong. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So this is correct. So the. No, this is not correct. This needs to be the output. So the output is connected to the 33 nanofarads cap. Let me find a jumper. Can I ask, uh, just out of curiosity, do you narrate um, when you're alone too and working? Because I find myself yeah. doing it. All the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah, uh, totally. <laughs> yeah. It's necessary. And then I curse and throw <laughs> it away, and then I have to Same. narrate going and grabbing it. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah, today I had this uh, situation where, so I'm now working on this video about the kick drum and I have to, uh, uh, 
I'm stuck on the part where I explain like this bridge T oscillator. Um, mm. And the problem with explaining it is like the fact that it oscillates, I, I can explain in a way that's understandable, I think. But what I'm currently stuck on is just explaining why it dies down in volume, like why it starts out loud and then it gets quieter, right? Because w with this kind of mechanical analogy, it's really hard to explain like comprehensively. I'm tempted to just say, oh yeah, it does that, deal with it, but... <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Have you seen, have you seen this uh, article uh, called Anatomy of a Drug Machine? Uh, I think someone posted it in a stream ago, but I don't, have not looked at it yet. Does it explain that? I'm not sure that this is a client. You're very detail oriented, I must say. I'm very impressed. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not that detail oriented. <laughs> but I think that should explain this. Um, yes, yeah, that's it. I'm going to post it on YouTube. Yeah, the problem that like I, I I've been googling a little bit like for explanations uh, people we people talk about it but the problem is that the usual way that it goes is like it starts out nice and they're like oh yeah the rolling drum machine blah blah, blah. and then they it's mm. just like there's like these formulas just like oh yeah and of, of course it does this because and then it just like x plus fifteen g blah 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 over whatever yeah. and that's why that is that way and I'm like well, that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> yeah, I want the childish analogies. Yes, please. The car goes up the hill and yes. then the yeah, stone like, uh, roll. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to explain it in the, in a sense of like, it's like a pendulum because it kind of is like the, the, the oscillator. Like you initially you push yeah. the pendulum to one side, and then it swings back and forth. And like a pendulum, it has like inertia, right? So it like slows down and then it stops mm -hmm. oscillating. But it's like very hard to like. Uh, tie that in with the actual how the current flows in the circuit because it's not it's not like that by the way i think i'm done with this uh thing here i think we can try okay. i don't think emma if you try to link now in chat i don't think you can maybe more it has to turn you into a moderator a wrench or whatever that tool is called like a moderator yeah let me check. I don't know why it's a tool uh, did you did you post anything ever? Because I can't. Yes. I, can, I can only. Yes, can see it in the chat. I, I can. I, I can. See Anatomy of the drum machine. Yeah, it's not visible. I think they censored it, basically. Oh really? Yeah. Can you can you post something else? Just like a, a word or two, and then I can make you moderator, and then you can post it. Analog is a tool. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, Tolkien fan. Tolkien fan says a pendulum with no friction resistance will continue definitely. Yeah, that's the thing. So that yeah. that's that's what I'm struggling with with the circuit because with the, with the oscillator, it's kind of like, well, why doesn't it just keep oscillating? Well, because somehow it loses energy. Like every circle, it, uh, every cycle, it loses energy. But then the question is like, how do you explain this loss of momentum, basically? Um, Eva, did you? Oh, that's you. But E J, EJ, yeah. that's you. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna make you a moderator. Please don't abuse. Okay. No. No. That's the link. <laughs> All right. So now you should be able to post the link. What happens if we start banning each other? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> okay. So YouTube science. People, um, it's exciting. I just turned on the power supply and it did not go into current limiting mode, so I don't think I messed anything up horribly so let's see if uh, we hear anything oh look at that wait let me let me switch out this uh, thing here again the potentiometer just so we go for the real experience i'm gonna get another 33k uh, yes and i mean you you can't hear it i'm very sorry but it's um I would say no, it's, people are saying that it sounds great. Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's quite close, I would say. Uh, I'll put this in here. Mm. I'm so jealous of chat. We were able to hear it. Yeah, I think it sounds super good. 
Um, I think someone like back, uh, like a couple, like an, an hour back, I guess, like someone mentioned that uh, to them, the high pitched part of the cowbell wasn't loud enough. So my question now would be to you, if you're still here, does it sound closer now? Because my assumption would be that the bandpass probably shaves off some of the low end. And if, the, if it does that, then maybe more of the high end comes through. And so now, you know, the, the, the balancing is correct. That's my hope. But I think, I don't have a reference sound right now, but I think it sounds pretty close. Uh, it's actually really... <laughs> I want it as a doorbell <laughs> or a text message signal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, Analog said, can you do AB with and without the filter? Um, yeah, sure. Let's try that. Um, oh, wait. I'm not sure. Well, the problem is like if I just take if I just take the the socket and I just like uh, connect it to the output of the BCAs, then we're gonna have the problem again with the uh, ringing, right? So quickly, I will just set up another buffer. It would be really nice if you did like what you have done now completely on the breadboard. If you do that. Uh, really quickly in the simulator so that some of us can take a print screen and then just do it ourselves without having to look at the fucking 808 service manual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can maybe do that. Let's let's get this working first, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of us <laughs> are asking for a friend. <laughs> Okay, so I'm wondering now. Well, it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm, I'm basically wondering, like, since we, you know, we take the signals here and we feed them into the filter. And I wonder if I now mix these together over here, maybe I'm messing with the with the main, like with a, with a signal that goes into the filter. But if I use big enough resistors, I don't think it should be too big of an issue. Let's hope. Right. But ever you mentioned the the nine hundred nine kick drum, right? When I looked at the service manual for the for the nine hundred nine, uh, mm -hmm. it kind of struck me like how different the uh, setup is, right? So it doesn't seem to be using uh, like a bridge T or twenty topology mm -hmm. at all, right? And I think it has a. Uh envelope on the pitch as well unlike unlike the 808 yeah it's completely different yeah, yeah actually i tried um, i tried to work some of that into my kick drum so mine now can kind of have a little bit of like the 909 thumb which i'm very happy with mm -hmm. but it's interesting like when i looked at the service menu it almost looked like they're using like a proper oscillator to uh to get the, mm -hmm. the sound source right mm -hmm. yeah like um I guess FM drum machine, almost. An FM drum machine. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what the what the waveform is that the VCO produces in there? I don't know that. No. Huh. No, I don't know. Isn't this triangle? No, that's the sine wave. Is is in eight hundred eight, right? That's yeah. the sine wave just from the filter. I mean, it's a sine um, wave, but it's but it's also kind of not a sine wave because they. It's really interesting. Like they use, they abuse like a NPN transistor, like in the, uh, they abuse an NPN transistor as a kind of almost uh, a voltage controlled resistor, but it's fucking up the waveform. Like when the, when they, like they use it to like uh, do a little bit of a pitch uh, envelope at the beginning. And when that's active, it like deforms the waveform in a weird way. So it's not mm -hmm. a sign at that moment. It only is a sign like after it goes into the the, the base pitch, basically. Okay. Okay. Why? To Why? get like a clicky oh, I, I I think it's like from what I, like from what I experienced now that I designed mine, it's kind of like, so using the transistor there is just very cheap and very easy. It's just one part. You don't have to worry about um, 
Uh-huh. you know adding just more circuitry to make it like a proper voltage control yeah. resistor because then you know you get into like vca territory and then it gets complex quickly but in that case you can use the transistor but the trade-off is that it mangles the sound but also it mangles the sound in a nice way because then like the initial uh, transient of the kick drum is like a little distorted and that makes the attack like just like punchier and so it's i kind of feel like it's 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 a situation of they wanted to save cost, but also they noticed, oh, this sounds good, right? So it's a win-win. Mm-hmm. Lucky, yeah, that's very nice. But um, I, I really like uh, face, uh, face lock loop for zero for six. Mm. I don't know if you played with it. You can make really cool oscillators. It's a CMOS. It's a very simple what is control oscillator. It's a CMOS yeah. chip, right? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's really it's really cool. Uh, you can really make some interesting sounds of it. So whatever frequency you send to the voltage input, the internal oscillator kind of locks to whatever you're sending mm. to the pin. But I was playing with it, and you could almost make like a kick drums sounds with it. Um, um, it's really that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, really, I really like it. I really, really like it. I think I and you can add, easily add voltage control as well. Yeah, I I, th- I think I saw like a document at some point somewhere where someone like made a VCO out of the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like a proper scaling mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. All right, we are now ready to hear the cowbell with and without filter. So let's see. Um, here it is again with with the filter, and here it is without the filter. Oh, it's much quieter. Sorry, I have to. Um, I, I put in a voltage divider because I was afraid that the level is going to be insanely loud, but it turns out that it isn't. So let me quickly fix that. Well, yeah, people were answering to something you said a while ago with the 909 being triangle through mm-hmm. diode thingy. Mm. Oh, it is a triangle. Someone also said Simon has a beautiful mind. <laughs> it's kind of nice. <laughs> I wonder what I said of substance to get such a lovely compliment. <laughs> okay, so like... quickly, people, chat, because you know mm-hmm. Simon ever can hear, but he is without filter. Very bright, very, uh, yeah, very bright mostly. And then here it is with the filter. It's also much louder, I'm sorry. So without filter, with filter. I kind of like it without the filter more, honestly. But that's just now. You like it? Or maybe not. You like it without the filter? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it has more uh, presence, right? Yeah. That's also, what you you <laughs> you would buy. You would in a mix. You would like EQ up some of the highs. Well, but you know the interesting thing is that the I kind of feel like with the filter it sounds more dare I say analog, in a way. You know, like it's more very like, analog regardless mm. in this case though. But I, f- I feel like without the filter it's just like the square waves they just sound so harsh, you know. So that mm-hmm. t- to me, that always like uh, feels digital in a way. Yeah, but it cuts through in the mix, bro. True. What would, what would happen if you detuned oscillators a little bit from each detuned other? Detune them. So, uh, I mean, yeah. Like, so I, I guess right now you have you have them all in the same frequency. No, 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 no. So one of them mm-hmm. is at eight hundred hertz, and the other one is at five hundred forty hertz, okay, and that's okay, that's okay. I think a fifth or something like that. That's like very specific in the manual. They say like it has to be this, but I can I can detune it for you. Let me try that. You Why so just have them on foot so you can tune it yourself. So is it just two oscillators that you? Two oscillators. Yeah. Oh, what would be interesting if you had. Um... Because now you have all of them. Yeah, I agree. For the the symbol, you mean? 
you're using 40106, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so let's... So do six. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's out of scope for this video, uh, for this stream, but... <laughs> um, yeah, at some point, sure. Like, I, I actually, I want to... My goal is to actually go through all the service manuals. So do all the 606 stuff, do all the 808 stuff, do all the 909 stuff, but that's going to take a while. Um, I would suggest that we quickly, just to wrap things up, like, we will just look at the rest of the circuit that we haven't set up, just yeah. so... Uh, we're all on the same page when it comes to like, oh, was this a complete thing or was it not the complete thing? So to recap, we did these two oscillators. We tuned them to the values that are uh, specified here. Um, we set up these VCAs um, and we made them work by buffering uh, the output. Um, we kind of learned that if we don't buffer um, the output, which we take from uh, this point and this point respectively. So if you don't buffer these points, uh, you're going to have bad time. So if you want to use this VCA, always buffer. Um, and then what we did was we set up the envelope generator up here. We played around a little bit with the resistor value here to see like how it affects the tail. And indeed, if you increase the resistor value, you get like more of a, of a, of a, of a, of a ring at the end. Um, and then this part of the circuit we did not build because I just replaced that with a push button. Like if you wanted to trigger it like from an external source, you would need something like this or you could set up a comparator or something like that, but uh, that's uh, relatively easy. Um, and then we built this bandpass filter or at least we assume that it's a bandpass filter um, and it's, uh, it's working nicely. And now what we would be missing is um, this part. And I think that it's actually not really doing much. So we can see here that we are um, putting a capacitor in series, and then we add in this resistance to ground. Um, and what that will do is um, it will, so they say themselves, <laughs> they say themselves that this is the level right so this is a voltage uh -huh. divider right this is a potentiometer uh, that goes to ground so that's a voltage a variable voltage divider so if you turn the knob you change the level of the cowbell and if you think back to the last stream we saw in the um, manual that you know the 808 only has one control for the cowbell and that's actually the volume so that's uh, this part here uh, and then this cap here which is a one microfarad um, that is just going to act as an uh, AC coupling. Um, so that's going to eliminate like any constant voltages and it's only going to let uh, basically oscillations pass through. I'm assuming that is just a safety measure. So that doesn't really affect the sound. Like also, I mean, AC coupling is also always a um, uh, high pass filter. So this is going to cut out some low end, but the, the, the cutoff is like so low because the cap is huge and the resistors are like very small. So you can see here, this is an 8.2K and this is a 5K. So because the resistors are so small and the cap is so big, the cutoff is super low. So it's like at, if I had to guess, it would be like something like two or three Hertz. So it's not going to affect the sound. All we can do here is adjust the volume. And then um, over here, we have actually another high pass. So this is a very like straight up high pass. We have 22 nanofarads and 22K. Um, that is gonna affect the low end. So apparently they felt the need to cut out more of the low end. Uh, so that might sound different in our circuit here, uh, but I'm, I don't really feel inclined to set this up now. Uh, and then all we have over here is a buffer. And then that goes all the way to the output. And that's it. So I would say I would consider this a, a, a mission international success. Yes, success. Um, yeah, and we're actually close to just ever like for context. Basically, uh, when I did these live streams in the past, I would I would not set an endpoint, and that would sometimes result in like me just droning on for hours, and <laughs> that got uh, a little bit exhausting at some point. So now what I <laughs> prefer to do is just to set an endpoint. And uh, usually I say we're doing two hours. We started at 6.30. So 
uh, we know at 8 30 that's like the two hour mark so i think this is a good wow, place to only leave it wow. yeah, yeah very good like two minutes yes but i quickly wanted to talk about the next stream uh, ever which we are going to do together simon if you want to join you are very welcome the idea is that we want to look at the the moog uh the classic moog transistor letter filter mm -hmm. yes trademark yes so can i suggest something sure what i think would be interesting i would be happy to i'll be happy to breadboard this uh, although i don't have cameras uh, yeah, I don't know. Exactly. You want me to breadboard this first as well, because I think it would be interesting to compare um, compare MOOC ladder, uh, transistor ladder with diode ladder. And I think that could be interesting, but maybe it's too much. Um, since you have already a trans uh, diode ladder, you made a really cool video about the ladder filter. Could be could be nice to see how they work differently. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think the, the 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 most interesting difference between uh, the diode letter filter that I did and then the the Moog filter is just the way that the feedback is applied to get the resonance, uh, because like you know how the Moog filter like when you turn up the resonance it loses low end right, it's a kind of mm -hmm. in, infamous behavior and then uh, my filter doesn't do it because like I just copied the way that I do resonance from the Cork MS twenty filter which just does it in a specific yeah. way that doesn't kill the low end, basically. And yeah, that's going to be interesting to, to compare, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you, one of you does the one and the other does the other, and I can be comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great to me. Perfect. Illuminati triangle right um, there. The thing is that the transistor is supposed to be matched as well. So... I, I'm, I've never matched transistors. I have no proof to do that. It, that actually is, um, I mean, of, of course, it improves the sound quality, but it's not, it still works if you don't do it. But, um, you know, the SEM, SEM ICs, I actually have, because they, they made, the ones, the, the VCO, the famous VCO SEM, you know, which I'm talking, 3340. Yes. They, they, made, um, they made also matched transistors ICs which I have. Mm -hmm. So uh, I could I could use them as well and compare, but that, that, that might turn into a massive project. And and also I don't know how would I actually show the breadboard on the camera. I don't have a proper... Yeah, that's an issue. Like, I mean, this setup already is like kind of suboptimal because, you know, you have to watch the stream. Like actually before mm -hmm. Simon and I did the first stream, like I was looking into different, maybe they're, I thought there might be a method to like just have both people share their screens at the same time and combining it to the same stream, but I couldn't find a proper solution. So probably the way that we would, mm -hmm. we will have to do it is like, uh, so I will be able to share the schematics um, and then uh, you breadboard and I also breadboard. And um, um, okay. la last time what Simon did was like, he just put the, like his circuit, onto the loudspeakers and so that went to the microphone so I could hear. Okay. This Everybody is love, love that. Yeah, it's no, um... an amazing moment. <laughs> <laughs> the... I had an idea for a module to, to make a... Um... So, sorry, go on. No, 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 go on. Uh, you go. Oh. Okay. I had an idea to, for a module to, um, to have a tiny PCB that you can you can replace transistor ladder with diode ladder and uh, LED ladder <laughs> but uh, I don't know if that LED ladder would work um, it could be interesting but yeah yeah I don't know what do you think I did that once like I, I had um, I took my filter design with the diodes and I replaced the diodes with LEDs because uh, everyone in the comments mm -hmm. was like hey that should work right and I was like yeah should work mm -hmm. and I did that and the problem was that uh, the you know regular diodes have generally like are in the same ballpark when it comes to like forward voltage drop. The problem that I had like what I had to learn the hard way about LEDs is that uh, it's not the same at all. They differ wildly. It's crazy. So like one LED will turn on at like 1.2 volts and the other will turn on at 1.5 volts. And the issue is that in my design. 
uh, it kind of like implicitly relies on the fact that the diodes all have a similar forward, forward voltage drop, basically. And so with the LEDs, it did work, but it sounded like really, really funky, really strange. It had like all these weird artifacts in the sound and it like was very like clicky and I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, but it looked nice because, you know, as soon as the filter got activated, like it, it, it lit up basically. So that was cool. Okay. That's nice. Also and then have you tried you can try with different colors. Sorry, you go. No, no, no. Um, have you tried the uh, German diodes? Because you made the you made it first with silicon diodes, right? Yeah. I've never tried any other diodes in the in the design. No. Um mm. I think the the I think it should work. I think it should sound it should affect mm -hmm. the sound. Um so yeah, it might be interesting to try. Maybe more distorted? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay, that sounds good. Nice. Sounds good. Well, they were asking in in chat when you were planning to do this stream. So I guess that also sort of sets the, the bar for how much you two can prepare until then. It's in two weeks. Okay. Two weeks. Yeah. Good luck preparing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for. So uh... no, no, no breadboarding beforehand. No, so, no, you, you, or I don't, I don't set any rules, but I'm assuming you can breadboard however much you want. Wouldn't you, you agree? You, you can breadboard how much you want. Uh, like for me, a rule of thumb is that I try to prepare as little as possible, um, just so I don't have too much work. But if you, <laughs> but if you want a breadboard before, and that's great. Uh, also, I would, I would suggest that we maybe get together, like uh, at some point before the stream, and just like you know, talk about what we're going to talk about. But uh, yeah. yeah, generally, I mean, prepare how much you want. It's it's all great. Okay. Is is uh, our OTAs? Uh, is it cheating to use OTAs as well? <laughs> In a filter design? Yeah. Well, I mean, since we're looking at the Moog filter, like they don't use them. I mean, we could like if you want to build something with an OTA, sure, go for it. It's cheating, okay, but whoever said cheating was a bad thing. Like yes. this isn't sports. True. or anything silly like that okay let's see what happens cool uh, so yeah thank you simon thank you ever for coming on it was very fun uh, i'm very Not happy true. very happy that we that we got something working and i think it sounds great so uh that's good and um yes yeah, so i will see you again in two weeks then thanks yes. to the people in the chat for asking questions Thanks for confirming that our audio is good. Sorry for the technical difficulties. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>